Hi guys, welcome to this video tutorial on how to perform correlation analysis using SPSS. Um, so this is an extension to the lecture we've just done and we'll be learning how to perform two types of correlation analysis. One of these is called a Pearson's correlation coefficient and the other one is called a Spearman's rank correlation. Okay, um, now if you remember from the lecture, the Pearson's correlation is the parametric um, version of a correlation analysis and the Spearman's is the non-parametric version of a correlation analysis. So to do this we are going to use the data from an Excel file which you can find on Moodle um, called Correlations Analysis Tutorials Data and as you recognize this is data we looked at last week and the data set we're going to use in order to perform this tutorial is the height and foot size data from a group of students okay so basically what we want to find out is is there a correlation between height and foot size okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the data that we've got in here okay so the data here basically shows um for these columns a and b we've got the student that we measured and we've got the course that they were in okay we're not too concerned about these columns so we can leave these and in this column we've got student height and in this column we've got foot size so these columns c and d are the columns we're interested in. so here we have a variable for height and a variable for foot size okay and each row represents each student that we measured okay right so what we want to do is first of all highlight all of the height and foot size data remember not to highlight the column headings SPSS doesn't like words and letters so I'm going to press Control C copy that and then open up my SPSS data view and then just click on that top cell and press Control V to paste those values in Okay, so now we have our data in data view in SPSS. Next, what I need to do is I need to um, tell SPSS what the components of our variables are. So for that, we're going to switch to variable view. Okay, and here we can just change a couple of things. So first of all, we can change name. All right, this is the name of our variable. So the first one we will call height, and then the second one we will call foot size remember if we want to have two words in there we need to have a, um, a space okay so foot size um, we want to keep them as both numeric okay because they're both numerical variables we don't have to worry about these um, these categories here with decimals label we've got no nominal or categorical data so we can ignore values as well but what we do need to do is we need to change the measure so um, because we've got numerical data or quantitative data, we want to select scale. All right, the little ruler there kind of gives it away that um, this type of data is scale data. Okay, so now we've selected all the properties of our variables. We can switch back to the data view and just check that that's done correctly. So yeah, we've got height up here and foot size over here. All right. So once we've got our data into SPSS and we're happy with the properties of the variables we can then move on to actually perform some statistics okay so it's actually pretty simple to run correlation analyses in SPSS okay so like all analysis we want to go up to the analyze tab at the top um, if we click on that we get another drop down box okay now there's all sorts of options in here and if we kind of just move down we can see one for correlate so that's the option we want to select and then if we move over to bivariate okay so that basically means we've got two variables that we want to correlate okay and then click on that we'll get another box open up okay and in the left here we'll see both of the variables that we're interested in that we want to try to find a correlation of okay and what we want to do is move both of these ones over into this variables box over here right so we can either click and drag it over or we can click on it and just press the little box and it'll 
arrow box and it'll move it over there for us. Okay, now if we just um, move down a little bit, we will see that there are a couple of options that we can select here uh, within the correlation coefficients box. So Pearson's has already been um, selected, okay, so we can keep that as it is. But the other thing we want to um, perform is a Spearman. Okay, so these are the two types of correlation analysis that I talked to you about in the lab. So for now, we'll just select them both and um, get the outputs for both of them. Okay, um, and then down here you'll see test for significance. We can select a one-tailed or a two-tailed. Okay, these are these are different types of hypotheses. Um, now, for all intensive purposes, I, I suggest that we always go for a two-tailed hypothesis. Okay, it's a bit more conservative. Um, and it's the one that is predominantly recommended to be used. Okay, it's only in special cases where you may want to use a one tail. Okay, so once we've got that, we can literally just press OK, and SPSS will run that analysis for us. Okay, so this is now our output box, and what we've got here is our output for our Spearman's correlation to start with. Okay, um, so we can see here that we've got a correlation between height and foot size. Okay, so this is our correlation coefficient, okay, which we talked about in the lectures. Remember that it's always going to be between minus one and one. So if it's between zero and minus one, that means we've got a negative correlation. If it's between zero and one, it means we have a positive correlation. Okay, and the more extreme it is towards the one, the more of a correlation we have. And then if we move down, we can see um, this little bit here for SIG, okay, two-tailed SIG, that's our p-value. So if we scroll across, our p-value is 0 0.000, okay. It doesn't get much more significant than that. That indicates we have a highly significant correlation, okay. Remember that the threshold is um, 0 0.05 um, in order to make a decision about uh, whether or not we um, say something is significant in our data, so whether or not we reject or accept the null hypothesis. Okay, in this case, the null hypothesis was that there was no correlation between height and foot size. Okay, um, but because we have p value of less than 0 0.05, it means that something is significant in our data, so something. Um, is actually forcing a correlation and then we can therefore we can reject the null hypothesis okay so because the p-value is less than 0 0.05 we can reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a correlation okay um, the data down here just mirrors that okay so we just have height up here and we have foot size down here um, we can then scroll down a little bit and what we'll see is the output for the Pearson's correlation all right, it's very similar output to, to what we had up at the top for the Spearman's, okay? So we have a correlation coefficient here, and we have a p-value here, okay? Basically shows the same thing. So once again, um, this shows that we reject the null hypothesis, all right? We have a p-value of less than 0 0.05, so we're over 95% certain, or we can be assured that over 95% of our data um, are being influenced in some way. Okay, so there is a significant correlation. Okay. Okay, so having now completed these steps, um, I suggest that you now go to the workshop instruction sheet and complete that first part of the task which I've set you. And once you've done that, we can then move on to the next step. So, of course, in reality, We've got one set of data. We wouldn't perform both of these um, correlation analyses, right? We would only perform one, and that would depend on whether or not our data conform to the assumptions made by para parametric statistics. Okay. If they don't, then we have to choose non-parametric statistics. Okay. So remember that one of the main assumptions is that our data are normally distributed. Okay. So if we have normally distributed data, then we can perform parametric stats. And if you remember back to the last lecture, we have to perform a normality test in order to test that. Okay, so let's do that now, and then we can make a decision based on that normality test about which ones of these um, correlation tests are the most appropriate. Okay, so to do that, 
let's head back to our um, data view sheet again. Um, head up to analyze, over to descriptives, and then click on explore. Okay. Um, now, because in correlation analyses, both of our variables are dependent on each other, both of these go into the dependent list. Okay. Click on plots, and then we can select some other bits and pieces that we're interested in. So we can click on null, none here for box plots. We can take a look at histogram. It helps us decide whether or not we have normally distributed data or not. But we definitely want to click this bit here, normality plot. And then click continue. All right. Um, select both. It's always useful. Then we get some plots and our statistics output. And then click OK. It might take a couple of seconds. All right. Uh, but then we get our output. So here we've got our descriptive, so our means and our medians and stuff. If we scroll down, we then get our normality um, output. Okay. Um, and from this, we can see that we have um, p values indicated by sig here. Okay. For both of these tests, actually, of values greater than 0.05. Right? Because they're greater than 0, 0, 0 0.05, we can accept the null hypothesis for this test that there is no difference between the distribution of our data and a normal distribution, and therefore say that our data are normally distributed. Okay, so we have normally distributed data. Let's have a quick look at the histogram. Yeah, it tells us the same thing. All right. Um, so now what you need to do is based on this knowledge which test would be the most appropriate to you the parametric test the Pearson's correlation or the non-parametric test the Spearman's correlation um, and that is again one of the tasks I've set you on the instruction sheet for this workshop okay so that's it for this tutorial Good work guys getting to this point um, hopefully you've got some time left now that you can move on to the next um, spreadsheets in that Excel data sheet okay and use the instruction the word document instruction sheet that I've given you in order to perform the two tasks on those spreadsheets as well okay great work <laughs>